ABC 22 News starts now with your forecast first. Hi folks, Sky Trucker meteorologist Haley Boulay here. We have seen uh, an incredible amount of rain today and unfortunately that has led to another instance of flooding with roads washed out, culverts over their banks and many, many issues on our area rivers. In the meantime, a live look at radar shows the back end of the precinct very quickly rolling through. Still some heavier rain through Bakersfield, Waterville, all the way up into Franklin County. Not quite as intense for the Bolton and Richmond Flats on the highway. So still in a little bit of a downpour, a little bit of a downpour south of Benton. Southern Vermont, you are done with this storm system. We're going to talk about all the issues that all of this rain and snow melt has caused as we start here on ABC 22. Breaking at this hour, roads closed across central and southern Vermont. The town of Moortown evacuated and the waters keep on rising in some spots. The Winooski River on the rise tonight. Parts of Richmond, Hinesburg and Williston are flooded. And in Montpelier, Vermont's state capital is hoping to avoid a repeat of this summer's flood disaster. Governor Phil Scott addressed reporters just a short time ago. Rain patch in July are currently experiencing flooding once again. So for them, this is July and it's a real gut punch. Tonight, our top priority will be keeping people safe and evacuating or rescuing those who are in danger. Stay out of floodwaters. And it's not just Vermont. The North Country heavily impacted at this hour. We are live across the region. This is ABC 22 News at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lauren Maloney. First tonight, at least four people have been rescued in Vermont so far. 15 roads fully closed, around 30 partial closures. And I should mention those are changing almost by the minute. The Red Cross, by the way, just opened a shelter at the Barry Auditorium. Now let's get to ABC 22's Lily Sakaniwa leading off our coverage. She was in hard hit Moortown this morning and with roads closed. She is live at this hour in Middlesex. Lily? Yeah, Lauren, the heavy rain started last night, leading to some severe flooding in parts of central Vermont. The Moortown Elementary School was evacuated this morning following some water that infiltrated the building. And not long after that, the Office of Emergency Management issued a town-wide evacuation. Vermont is facing yet another bout of flooding. Um, I was just uh, over in Waitsville doing errands, and um, I started hearing rumors of uh, uh, things are really starting to flood. By mid-afternoon, water levels in the Mad River had risen to cover Vermont Route 100B on both sides of Moortown Village. Get home the normal way. Uh, of course, it's all flooded this way. I knew I couldn't get home. I had to turn over to uh, Route 100 and go by the Highwood School and then take Stevens Brook Dirt Road, which was a muddy mess, but you could still get through. In addition to road closures, Moortown Elementary School is currently shut down. Students were evacuated when water was discovered seeping into the building. And as you can see, the rain continues to come down right now and we'll continue to bring you updates on the situation as they come in. But for now, reporting in Middlesex, Lily Sakaniwa, ABC 22 News. Ongoing situation just about everywhere. Lily, thank you. Um, I mentioned those rescues just about two minutes ago. Seven swift water rescue teams are actively working with five on standby. The urban search and rescue coordinator updated us at five o'clock when we heard from the governor. Mike Cannon said there was a rescue happening just last hour, but previously three people needed help in a home in Jamaica. One person was rescued via a car in Waterbury. And again, another rescue was ongoing just a short time ago. In the North Country, roads along the Osable River have been washed out. That includes Route 9N near J and Route 73 in Keene. Reporter Matt Lawfer live in Osable Forks with the very latest. 
Lauren, just behind me, the raging Osable River, Route 9N closed as the river has swallowed many parts of the road between here in Osable Forks and in Jay. I spent much of the day trying to get to Keene, never happened. Along the way, I did meet up with Assistant Fire Chief David McKee. A few streets flooded. We got between nine ends closed off from between Osable Forks and Jay. Carry Road's closed, and the uh, upper part of Grow Road right now is closed. Right now, we got crews uh, standing by, and we're uh, just monitoring the situation right now, and uh, we're going to react and prepare as needed. As we were talking, the road around us started flooding, and we had to evacuate. Back to Osable Forks. I never did make it to Keene, but I spoke via Zoom with Keene Town Supervisor Joe Pete Wilson. Right now, the two hamlets of Keene and Keene Valley are, are cut off, and Keene itself is cut off from both Lake Placid and Jay, so we don't really have access to mutual support from other fire departments. So uh, right now, we're you know, we're hoping the water stops rising and we're really just trying to deal with things as we can on our own here. I checked in with the National Weather Service around 2 p.m. Water was just over 11 feet, a major flood state. It's come up so fast, even just since 7 a.m. this morning, it's risen four, five, six feet, depends on the spot exactly in the river. That being said, the rain continues on and off and the water coming off the mountains means we watch and wait. As of right now, as of right now, the roads are still closed. The river extremely unstable. Anybody living near the river is urged to keep a close eye and be prepared to evacuate. Live in Osable Forks, Matt Lawfer, ABC 22 News. Let's get back to Sky Tracker meteorologist Haley Boulay on the ongoing flood threat because this rain, as Lily mentioned, still falling in much of the area. Yeah, Lauren, and we are finding that the back edge of the precipitation is coming to an end, but it's still so very mild out there right now. Temperatures in the 40s in many locations that we're still finding melting snow coming off of the mountains. Earlier today, the National Weather Service reported six to eight inches of snowpack loss on Mount Mansfield. All of that water is heading to our area rivers, and in many spots, we haven't quite reached peaks. So even though it is dark, there may still be flood. It is important for folks to stay off the roads tonight, and if you do have to travel, do not cross a flooded roadway. You never know how deep the water is, if it could sweep your car away, or you never know the integrity of the road underneath the water. If it's still in place, you could be driving straight into a hole. So. Never travel through flooded roadways, heed road closures, and if you're living along any of the area rivers in our region, have a plan to evacuate. Know in the back of your mind where you're going to go, who you're going to go, and stay with tonight if you need to, because it may be an issue where the rivers do crest. Look at all that green, and look at all of our flood uh, issues today, whether they are washed out roads, water in the basement, we have seen it all. So in terms of our area rivers expected to crest at minor floods, stage. That is the Lamoille River at Johnson, Wells River at Wells River, the Williams River at Rockingham, the East Branch of the Pesumpsic River at East Haven, uh, the Wallam, uh, the Wallam Moose, Wallam Moosack, Alex, <laughs> what Alex said at North Bennington <laughs> and the Ottaquichi River. It's been a long day. The Winooski River at Waterbury is expected to crest at moderate flood stage and that also the Mad River is in that category where we have seen evacuations and where Matt Lawfer was just the East Branch of the Osable River expected to crest at major flood stage. So really a problem across our entire region. And as I said, meteorologist Alex Mosolenko is joining me now for a uh, quick look at some of our closures because there are so many of them as these rivers have risen. Meteorologist Alex Mosolenko, tell me all about what we are seeing across Vermont and New York. Yeah, that's right, Haley. Vermont and New York, hardest hit with this rainfall. Still some closures to talk about, though, across the Granite State as well. But we'll focus in on Vermont and New York, partial and full road closures at this hour. Berkshire, Long Vermont, Route 118, Pearly Road and Privy Hill Road closed. Linden, pretty much closed from Vermont 122 there. But it's uh, closed, excuse me, at US 5. In Hardwick, it's Vermont 14 that's causing fits. Between Cary Road and Marshall Street, it's St. J along US 2, just west of Vermont 18, closed because of a mudslide. 
In Roxbury, Vermont, along Vermont 12A, at the train underpass south of the village, it's closed. Rochester, Vermont 100, near intersection of Quarry Hill Road, is closed. Londonderry, southern Vermont, not left out of the mess once again, unfortunately. Vermont 11, near the intersection of Vermont 100 at West River, is closed. Richmond, US 2, between Bridge Street and Cochrane Road, is closed. Granville, Vermont 100, closed from Maston Hill to Kennedy Drive. Berlin, several closures there between Gladden Road and Browns Mill Road and Weston Street near Vermont 12. In Linden again, popping up for the second time near Vermont 122, but this time the I-91 exit 24 and intersection US 5 closed. In Waterbury, it's US 2. Remember the roundabout experiencing flooding during July. It is happening again. In Perkinsville, it's Vermont 106 between Vermont 131 and Little Escutney Road that's experiencing some flooding. And on to New York, some more issues there, especially in Elizabethtown, US 9 and New York 9N. That's where we have some road closures to discuss. J, New York 9N between New York 86 and Church Street heading into Keene. Closed down this evening. Bangor, US 11, that road closure just alleviated in about the last five minutes or so, not popping up on our 511 map, so that is good news. North Hudson, New York 73 between I-87 and exit 30 and Bobsled Run Lane is closed down. And last but not least, over in Keene, New York 73 westbound, Owls Head Lane to North Country Schoolway continues to be closed at this hour. So please travel safely as you head home, or maybe you're heading to a neighbor's house to stay safe from that local waterway near your own house. Whatever you're doing this evening, make sure you're doing it with a weather-aware sense to it all. Lauren? And Alex, I'm going to add one more. State Forest Road from Townsend State Park to Red Wing Farm washed out and the road is closed. So one more to add there from Townsend. The Capital City Public Works Department filled sandbags this afternoon and they are available right now at the Volunteer Hub in front of City Hall. Why? Well, as the governor hinted, a mix of anxiety and stress right now in central Vermont as we close out the year the same way many people started their summer. Let's get to ABC 22's Matt Holderman in Montpelier right now. Matt, tell us where exactly you are and what you're seeing. Right, Lauren, I'll start by saying you really can sort of feel that stress and anxiety you were talking about here in downtown Montpelier. A lot of businesses, the same ones that got flooded out back in July, have already uh, boarded their doors with sandbags. We're going to, to go, excuse me, going to show you that a little bit later tonight. But right now we're standing on Landon Street, just above the north branch of the Winooski River. And if you look right down below us here, the water not too far beneath our feet at this very moment. At about 3 p.m. this afternoon, the city reported that the river level of the Winooski River was at 14 feet, and I believe right here it appears to be between 15 and 16 feet. That is right around that cresting stage. There are just a couple areas of downtown that are flooded, like a couple uh, low-level uh, parking lots and things of that nature, as well as some uh, basements of businesses, but I want to show you right behind me here. This might be familiar to some of our viewers. This uh, sort of pole here that shows a history of flooding in Montpelier. You can see this sticker pasted on says 2023. This was the first major flood of this year back in July. Pretty high up looks to be five to six feet higher than where the water is right now. I believe it was uh, 20 feet was the peak. And if you look farther down here now, you can see where the water is right now. Like I said, it appears to be about 15, 16 feet, and that is just a couple feet below the uh, Tropical Storm Irene markers. You can see one from 2011, the higher one being Irene, and the one below it being another flood that happened here in May of 2011. Uh, water right now just about two feet below those markers. So there is certainly a bit of uh, fear and anxiety right now for a lot of those business owners in Montpelier who already dealt with this once this year and some of them starting to see that water creep into their basement again. We're going to try to catch up with some of them throughout the evening here and bring you more updates. But for now, Lauren, will send it back to you. Matt, basements flooded right now in Montpelier. We know there is still uh, no longer a U.S. Postal Service, so people um, still struggling, obviously, from July, um, and this is not helping, um, especially uh, around the holiday season. A break from weather coverage when we return. Queen City leaders want to hear from you. City Hall doors will be open again tomorrow to discuss even more pressing issues when it comes to public safety.